Do you want to know how to get your files from spreadsheet straight into JSON and then ready for Godot import? Then stay tuned. That's what we're going to be doing today. In the last episode, we made a graphical user interface for our inventory system. And today we're going to add functionality to it. Now, before we can really add functionality, we better have some items to mess around with. And I don't really feel like adding those one by one and you shouldn't feel like doing so either. So today we're going to be using a spreadsheet with all our items, import that to JSON and then put that straight into Godot ready for future use. Now I'm here in my Google Drive to start this off. Today I'm going to be using Google Sheets as my spreadsheet program. And the reason I use Google Sheets is because I like the idea of all my important files like item tables, loot tables, monster tables, you name it tables, to be immediately saved to my cloud. When I put them on my hard disk and my hard disk crashes, I possibly get set back in my game development maybe months, maybe even half a year. That's the last thing I want. So within this Google uh, Drive folder, I have two sheets. I have an item table and a loot table. Let's have a look at them. In my item table, I have listed several items that I'm going to be importing into Godot through JSON for this tutorial. In a real game, it's going to be much longer, of course, but for this tutorial, we don't need 10,001 items. In our loot table, we have several map names that are going to be dictating what can drop in loot on that particular map. Now, you can expand on this by saying uh, special chests, legendary chests, specific monsters, bosses, you name it. If you code it in this loot table, you can put what that specific boss, monster, map, chest can drop. Now, before we continue, let me quickly give you one quick piece of advice. When you're naming these columns, um, give a little bit of thought about that because these column names are going to be the dictionary names and the variables names within the dictionaries um, that are going to be used by you in your code. So having, for example, just a tag for the weapons uh, could possibly become a little bit confusing when you start to code and you have 10 different attack stats. So in my case, for my item table, I like to start all my columns with the name item. So I always name know where it came from. Now that we had a look at what the sheets are, let's go over how we're going to put them into JSON. In Google Sheets, you have add-ons, and I'm pretty sure you can use Excel for this as well, and that Excel, Microsoft Excel, has a add-on for this as well. I'm just using Google Sheet for the immediate cloud synchronization function, and I know with the new Microsoft, it's probably possible too. Um, it's just something I'm used to. Um, for Google Sheets, we want to be downloading Export Sheet Data Add-on. This is a free add-on, just Google, Google Sheets, export sheet data, add on, download, and you'll immediately get on the right website. And you can add this to your uh, Chrome web browser, and it will be immediately available within your Google Sheets in the web browser. With that installed, we can go to add ons, export sheet data, open sidebar. Now in here, all the standard settings, and there's quite a few of them, are all going to be immediately correct for the purpose that we have. We only have to change one thing. When you open the sidebar, what's most likely is it says select sheets, all sheets. Now it is possible to use that you might need all sheets in the future. If you maybe want to create different tabs within your spreadsheet, maybe a tab for all your armor items, all your weapons, all your crafting items, you name it, then at some point you want to maybe export all sheets and then iterate through all those sheets within a JSON file and, and import those to Godot. For now, we only have one sheet. With one sheet, we're gonna say current sheet only, and we set it to export. It will compile the JSON file immediately and bam, it's done already. Let's do that with our loot table as well. So again, add on, export sheet data, open the sidebar, set it to current sheet only and export. It will compile our JSON file and just a few seconds later, bam, it's done. Now within our work folder where we open the files from, we now have two JSON files and these are going to be imported into Godot. 
Now, before we're going to be using these JSONs, let's first prepare our project structure. Within Godot, you can see that from the last tutorial, I have created one more folder within our file structure, and that is the data folder. Within the data folder, I'll be putting all our JSON files. So once you've added that to your uh, game folder or your project folder, let's go back to Google Drive and we're gonna be downloading these JSON files. With them downloaded, I'm going to my downloads folder. I'm gonna be cutting them away and I'll be putting them within my Godot project in the data folder. I've already tested, did one test run, so I'll be replacing these. And now we have an item table and a loop table within our JSON folder, within our uh, data folder. Now, with that done, we can go to Godot and we can actually start coding. To start coding, we're gonna have to add our code to a script. Now to add a script to an existing node, you probably know you have to push the add script button over here while you have a node selected. However, we don't want to add our JSON import code to our inventory node. The reason why is that we want to be using this data within these JSON files for many more moments and many more reasons than just inventory. We probably want to be using the items to and their stats specifically when we equip things and items and armor and weapons to our character in our character screen. We want to have the loot table data when we are walking around on the map within our map scene. So we shouldn't be adding them only to the inventory. We basically want these dictionaries, these pieces of data, these data tables to be readily available whenever in the game. And to do that, you can add a singleton to Godot. A singleton acts a little bit like a global variable in other game codes. To add this singleton to the game, we're going to be adding a new script from down here in the file system. It's going to be a normal GD script. I'm going for empty template. Now I'm going to be naming our new script import data. And now we have our new script here. To make this the singleton, to let the game know it should load this piece of script from the start and have it loaded all the way to the finish, we're going into project, project settings, and we're going to the tab auto load. Now under auto load, you open under path the import.gd file that we just created, and you add this. And as you can see here in the singleton column, it all automatically says enable, which means it is always available and it gets loaded even before any game node is loaded when the game starts. Now we open our script and I've prepared the piece of code for the item uh, table data already. So we're gonna be copy pasting that in here. We're gonna run over it to see what it exactly does so we understand it. And then we'll be making the same piece of uh, code for our loot table together. So we create a new variable called item data. And this is going to be the dictionary that is gonna have all our data from the JSON file. And this item data variable is gonna be the dictionary name that we'll be referencing in other parts of the code in our game. Now, under the ready function, which is a function which executes automatically the moment the game script uh, import data is done loading into the game scene. We define a new variable, item data file. And this variable is a of the type file and it's a new file. Now that item data file, we open it using the reference to our item table sheet1.json within our data folder on our project file structure. And we, uh, this, we uh, define it as a file and we read it. This is very important. Don't write it. You don't want to write over your data files of your game. You always want to import them. You never want to export out of them. If you want to save your inventory, we'll be doing that later. Then you want to create new JSON files and you want to store them in a different way on a different location. Now, we create a variable called item data JSON and we parse the JSON uh, format that is within this file and we get that 
as a text. So we'll be using the item data file reference. So we're using the same file that we're talking about here. And we get that as text using the JSON parse command. Now that item data file can be closed thereby saving our game resources. We don't need that file to be open all the time. That's not necessary. And then we load that item data JSON that we talk about here that we parsed the JSON as text into. We equal the results of that to our item data variable that we defined up here, thereby creating our dictionary. Now, to test if everything went well, what you can do is you can print um, that variable. And because it is rather short, uh, we only have several lines now, it's possible. But the first time you do this, do this maybe with 10 lines in your JSON file or 10 lines in your Excel sheet, I should say, or your Google sheet um, and use that to JSON uh, import and then test it using this print command. And then when you know this is going well, you can pretty much guarantee that it will work for many more uh, lines of code as well. Now with that done, let's do exactly the same, but then for our loot table. So we create a variable and it's going to be the loot data. We, under the same function ready, we create a variable called loot data underscore file. That is a file, new file, that loot data file is going to be opened. And we are going to use the reference that we have here but instead of item table, we call this loot table. This is of the type file and we read only. With that done, we can now parse the information within this file through JSON parse and get the text back as text. So far, loot data, JSON, this is going so this is basically just a temporary variable that we that we use is a JSON parse from our loot data file. We get that as text. Then we can close our loot data file to save the resources, and then we can define the end result loop data as equal to loop data json dot result. With that done, we can also print this dictionary to verify the results that we're going to do right now. To do that, let's just make sure we have a little bit of a structure within our game um, you probably be adding this inventory to a game you have already been building. You might have a map already. I have absolutely nothing. So I'm quickly going to be adding a new scene uh, custom note. We'll be adding a new note here and we'll be saving this within the root folder. Let's go one up and I'll just quickly name this game root. Now within my project settings, I'm going to under application run, I will set that game root to be the main scene to run from. And in here, I will add my inventory as a child so that it loads. The import data script is automatically loaded because it's an auto load singleton. So if I run the game now, I should be able to see my dictionaries. I see the child node right here from our inventory, our graphical user interface that we made. And down here in the output, I can see that it has added the charcoal uh, with no defense, but uh, some item weight here, 0 0.25, the iron boots, and this is all going alphabetically. So these are all our items within our dictionary. And we have our dictionary 
of grasslands with our item chances, our max quality, your min quality, the names of the items, etc. etc. So everything seems to have imported properly, and we are ready to go for our part three, in which we'll actually be using this data to add some items to our inventory to mess around with. I hope this was helpful. If you liked the video, put that thumbs up, hit subscribe and that bell notification button so that you get a notification for when the next part goes live next Monday. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below or find me live on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday where I stream my own game development. I'm currently working on an RPG slash TCG kind of game and I'm really excited to get it out to market. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.